I have a priest friend who during Christmas season um, tells people, please, 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 don't give me any gifts. And when I first heard that, I thought, what, what, a, what a holy guy. He doesn't want any gifts at, at all. This is, this is amazing. But for some reason, in my back mind, I think, I think there's a different reason than this not wanting gifts. So I asked him, why don't you want gifts during Christmas season? He loves gifts at other times sometimes, but I said, why don't you want gifts at Christmas season? Is it for the parish? You want to give them to charity? He goes, well, to be honest with you, I don't like writing thank you cards. <laughs> what? What? You don't, he goes, you know, he's very, I would say, he's not an anxious person, but he's the type of person that has a homily done for Sunday on Monday, right? He doesn't want to procrastinate. So as soon as he gets that gift, he feels like he has to write uh, the thank you card. It's actually got to the point now where people give him a Christmas gift. uh, They say to him at the end of it, you don't need to write me a thank you card, but you do write the best ones, they say. It's never been heard from me in mind because you can't read my handwriting. So there we there we go. Now, my, my brother, by the way, is completely the opposite. Him and his family, they are the king and queens and prince and princesses of thank you cards. Last year, I got my, my nephew, I think I preached about it at Christmas, I got him a Justin Jefferson jersey. He got it, and three days later in the mail was the thank you card. Three days, and it was already there. He's just right on top of it. And so there's Henry, my little seven-year-old godson of the time. Thank you, Uncle Alex, for this Justin Jefferson jersey. Uh, I was able to wear it to the Vikings game. I love you. You're my favorite godfather. I'm like, is there more than one godfather? But okay. Love, Henry. That's that's great. It reminds me of a segment that that Jimmy Fallon has, by the way. Jimmy Fallon, if you don't know, has a late night show on NBC. And back when I was in major seminary, he was at the late, late show. So 11.35 time on Friday nights. By that time now, I'm in bed, right? But he has a segment on Friday nights called Thank You. And he simply writes thank you cards. Now, of course, it's a comedian, so it goes something like this, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Paperclip, for keeping my papers organized. Without you, I don't know what the papers would do. Or thank you, F12 key on the keyboard. You look really nice. I've never used you, but I'm sure you're really good, Mr. F12. Thank you. But every Friday, that's one of his his segments. Why do I bring this up? Of course, today, in the readings, there's two main themes. There's healing, especially of leprosy, and there's also thanksgiving. So here we have it in the first reading. We have have Naaman. Who is Naaman, by the way? Naaman is a military officer, leading military officer of Syria. And unfortunately, he's struck with leprosy. And we've heard about leprosy before. If you know if you're struck with leprosy, you are, you are an outcast. And so you kind of imagine he almost kind of was hiding it from people. He was living in a way of like, if, if people have figured out I have leprosy, I won't be able to be a military officer anymore. My, my livelihood will be done with. But one of his servants, one of his servants who has actually taken in a, in a raid from Israel, says... There's someone in Israel that can heal you. And so the king writes a letter from Syria to the king of Israel asking for Naaman to be be healed. And sure enough, Elisha hears about this. And Elisha goes and he wants to heal Naaman. And he tells him, go plunge yourself seven times in the Jordan River. And at first, Naaman is upset because he's thinking, the Jordan River? I thought this prophet was going to come, was going to cast his hand on me, was going to cure me of this illness. And instead, you want to plunge me in the, in the Jordan River seven times? Are there not better rivers in Syria? And the answer is yes. Actually, the Jordan River is not actually known as that clean uh, of river. If you've ever been there before, you know, of course, it goes from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea and gets smaller and smaller, actually, and it gets dirtier and dirtier. And yet, when, when Naaman hears this, so he gets upset. But then one of his servants says to him, if it would have been an extraordinary thing for you done, you would have done it. Do this ordinary thing. So sure enough, Naaman goes and plunges himself seven times in the Jordan River. A very normal, ordinary thing. And he is healed. And as soon as he is healed of his leprosy, he goes back to Elijah. He wants to thank him. He wants to offer him talents and gifts. And Elijah refuses. 
So instead, he says, give me two mule loads of earth so that I can offer up sacrifice and holocaust to no other Lord but the Lord of Israel. To offer up sacrifice means to give thanksgiving to the God of Israel. We can think about this already a little bit. To offer up sacrifice and thanksgiving. What is a Eucharist, by the way? It's called thanksgiving. To offer up this thanksgiving sacrifice to the Lord. We fast forward now to the gospel. And once again, we hear the story of, of lepers. Here they are, they're, they're unclean, they're at the outskirts of the town, and they hear that Jesus is passing by, and so they cry out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And what does Jesus do? This isn't one of those miracles where he, he spits and has saliva and dirt and rubs it on their head. It's not a, mi a, mir a miracle happening right away. And says he tells them to do something very ordinary. Go show yourself to the priest. And so they go. And on the way, they're healed. But something interesting happens. Only one comes back. But the one that comes back, what does he do? He falls at the feet of Jesus and he thanks him. Thank you, Jesus says. Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? And so he says to him, stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. It's not only healing for the Samaritan, by the way, this foreigner of leprosy. It's this healing and this giving of eternal life. Because now he has seen, he is a God who he is called to worship, the God well, of Israel, and yes, the God of, of Christianity, Jesus Christ. And so now his faith has saved him, and he wants to give thanks to this God. Is giving thanks to God part of your repertoire? Is it part of your life? Do you give thanks to God? And there's so much to give thanks to God for. It's easy, by the way, to fall into complaining. It's easy to give into negativity. Oh, this didn't go right, or this person bothers me, or I didn't get the, you know, Alex and the terrible, horrible, no, no good, very bad day, right? I didn't get the pair of sneakers that I, that, I, that I wanted, or whatever it may be. But do we give thanks to God, even for the ordinary things, not even extraordinary? Do we give thanks to God for the breath that we take? So I'll take a breath right now. That's a gift from God. And we stop and think about that. He's created us in a way that we have life, that we can breathe without even thinking about it, that we can we eat, we, we, we're able to drink, we're able to, to read, we're able to communicate, we're able to build up relationships, on and on and on. All these great things we should give thanks to God for, but they're ordinary. And we can kind of just put them to the side. Oh, yeah, no big deal. No big deal. We have life. What a great deal that is. And so to give thanks to God for ordinary things and, of course, extraordinary things as well. And so I encourage you today to make it part of your weekly routine to stop for five or ten minutes and think about your week and to give thanks to God. And when you do this, you're going to see the immense blessings that God bestows upon each and every one of us. And so this week, I actually have an assignment for you. Kind of like Jimmy Fallon, I want you to write a thank you card, but not just to paper clips, by the way, right? I want you to write a thank you card to God, to sit down and to write him a thank you card. You know, I did this exercise my, myself yesterday as I was preparing, you know, lunch in the oven. I put it to heat up. I said, okay, now I'm going to write my thank you card to God. And so for five minutes, I kind of thought about it, I prayed about it, and I started to write. 
And at the end, I, I said something like, it's in cursive, so it's hard to read. Words can explain all that you do, but know that I am truly grateful. Alex. And I put the card down, had my lunch, but I kept on thinking about it. And throughout the whole day yesterday, afternoon and evening, and even before I went to bed, I realized, ooh, I should be thankful for this that happened this week, and this, and this, and this. The card was done. I didn't have to go back and write it, but even just spending even more time with the thoughts that come into your mind. And so this week, I encourage us, I challenge you, to write a thank you card to God. You don't need to share it with anyone. You don't need to tell your spouse what you're thankful for. Oh, you probably should tell them you're thankful for, for them, right? But this card is between you and God. To write him a thank you card. And so children, make sure your parents do this assignment, okay? All right? And parents, make sure your children do uh, the same. If it's something that is helpful to you, if it's something that's helped you grow in a deep relationship with God, I encourage you to do it more than maybe maybe this once. Maybe make it part of your your weekly uh, routine. A parishioner told me this morning, she said, I think I'm going to start doing that during my adoration hour, at the end of my adoration hour on Mondays. I'm going to start doing a thank you card to God. So if it's helpful, great. If it helps you go in a relationship with God, great. Praise God. So remember, there's so much to be thankful for. Extraordinary things, but ordinary occurrences as well. But let's take that time to return to God and to give him thanks.